Betty Friedan is uh, well known, I think, as the author of The Feminine Mystique. What are you interested in uh, at the present time? Well, three things, really. I'm, I'm trying to finish a new book called The New Woman. This is the, the woman that is emerging in America that's moved beyond The Feminine Mystique. And, and I am president of a, and I helped found, a new national, well, you might call it civil rights movement on behalf of the unfinished business of full equality for women and truly equal partnership with men. Um, it's called NOW, the National Organization for Women, but men and women are in it. And it is not a, it's not a women's organization, it's a civil rights movement that's um, devoted to taking action to bring women into, into uh, participation in the decision-making mainstream of all areas of American life and to break through the silken curtain of sex discrimination that keeps women really in menial housework roles, uh, whether you're talking about industry or the professions or higher education or the churches or the political parties or government. Uh, it is time that we, that we move ahead again in this unfinished revolution that's been standing still ever since women won the vote and therefore it's been necessarily moving backward and we've got to make it possible for women really to use their rights and be full people and and this will liberate men as well as women you know to share burdens and responsibilities as well as privileges and rights and to break through the stereotypes that keep men and women from being freely themselves how, do, how are you going about this? Well, for instance, we um, uh, uh, we got organized uh, uh, two years ago when um, in Title VII of the Civil Rights Act, sex discrimination is forbidden now by law in employment, like race discrimination. But even the commissioners supposed to enforce the act were taking the sex discrimination part as a big joke. Now, it isn't a joke, you know. Mm -hmm. Seven, uh, Seventy-five percent of women who work, that is, 28 million women working in, in America because they have to and they want to and they're helping to contribute to their families or they are supporting them fully, uh, that of these 28 million women, three out of four are doing the most menial uh, work, sales, clerical service uh, work. They, it isn't even a question of equal pay for equal work. They don't get a chance at the equal work. And their average wage is, is only about half of the average wage of men. It's, it's, it's a poverty wage in, in American standards. Uh, and the average wage of women in the U.S. today is about $3,000. And, and, you know, this is considered a poverty wage. Well, sex discrimination was supposed to be a joke. It's not a joke. I mean, every woman that works, <laughs> as you know, I mean, what chance do you have to be the Huntley Brinkley of Iowa? I wonder, <laughs> you know, out of the noon slot into nighttime? Yes? When? <laughs> you know, but, but uh, in every field, you know, we face it. We're, we're, we're slotted uh, if, if it takes exceptional ability even to arise to surface at all, and then you, you stop right here, you know, and, and uh, uh, it's true whether it's you're, you're cooking the church supper but you're not on the board of elders or preaching the sermon or whether you're in the political parties, you're addressing the envelopes, looking the stamps, looking up the zip code numbers and running the coffee clutches, but are you in the smoke-filled rooms? Or are you making the policy on the county committees, the state committees, the national committees? Are you running for office? We have one woman senator out of 100. And in employment, of course, I think employment is the gut issue today because until women are really there in the decision-making areas of employment, they're not going to be there in politics either. Well, I think now did succeed, has succeeded already in, in, in gradually getting it known in, the, in this country because we are a, we do use the media, we get our message across just like I'm getting it here, that sex discrimination is not a joke, that it should be, that it is outlawed and that, 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 it, that women who are discriminated against on the job should, you know, take their cases to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. And that now, if, uh, although we have virtually no money, as a, have a core of volunteer lawyers, that we have even taught women how to be their own lawyers in, in, in taking cases to court because women don't have the money often in these cases, you know. Mm -hmm. to, so I think we've, we've, we've gotten that across. I think that, that we were responsible in, 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 in getting President Johnson to go beyond just token lip service to women and saying he's appointing women to what turned out to be nothing jobs and to add sex to his own executive order forbidding discrimination under government contract and by government contractors. You know, if a university or a hospital or a company has a government contract and it is found that 
they discriminate in employment against the Negroes, that government contract can be removed. Mm -hmm. and now, President Johnson always had the power to add sex to that executive order, and yet even though he was supposedly the great friend of women, similar to the tokenism in the rest of his position, he did nothing uh, uh, about this until we put enough pressure on it that, that he finally did uh, uh, a few months ago. I interestingly enough here, Eugene McCarthy is, is the one candidate in the picture today who's really serious, takes women seriously as people. I don't know if you know it, but he's the chief sponsor in the Senate of the Equal Rights Amendment, which is what is needed to wipe out the discrimination that exists against women in, in, in the laws of, of, of many states. I, I don't know if your state happens to be one of them, but in many states there are still extremely unfair things affecting women that women can be forced to say for the same crime, uh, make longer jail sentences than men, or that, that the grounds for a, a one-time adultery, for instance, is that in some states is a ground for a man to get a divorce, but if his wife, his wife is found a one-time adultery, but it's not a ground for a woman to get a divorce against a man, or, or in employment again, uh, that discrimination can mask behind uh, so-called state protective laws, which forbid a woman to, to work overtime, you know, and, and so and in many jobs, I mean, we're all for labor standards, but let's protect men and women alike, you know, mm -hmm. and, and let's give women, women, men and women alike the opportunity at the lucrative jobs and these state protective laws that just really mask discrimination against women because they are used to, to forbid women access to um, uh, promotion to important jobs that, that might say require overtime or, or in a factory for instance requiring uh, the, some states say you can't lift, a woman can't lift more than like 25 or 35 pounds when you know a baby or a briefcase can weigh, you know, can weigh that much but, but uh, now that the federal law um, forbids a company to fire women out of seniority first if there's, say, a layoff in a plant, uh, the company can get around it by adding this little weightlifting element and then hiding behind the state protective law. Well, all of these inequities in, you know, women have never been interpreted under the Constitution as people. Women have never been interpreted as people and American citizens entitled to due process protection of the 5th and 14th Amendment. Eugene McCarthy's Equal Rights Amendment, uh, which is, which is, is the last of the unfinished legal business, I think, for women. There's a lot of unfinished business, but this is the important one in the law. Do, do tell people that they can join now, women and men who are interested in it. There, I'm sure that we will have a, a, a chapter here as a result, you know, I mean, out of the university and the interest in this sort of thing. But uh, meanwhile, they can write to 1629 K Street, now 1629 K Street, Washington, D.C., and, and 1629 K Street Northwest, Washington, D.C., and ask to join now. And you'll leave that uh, address with me. Yes. Uh, so that if anybody right. does not get it, uh, right. then they can uh, write me and be sure and get it. Right. And thank you very, very much, uh, Betty for Dan, for being with us, and good luck on your uh, visit to Iowa State. Thank you.